All right, guys, so in this video, uh, we're going to talk about uh, not linear sequences, but quadratic sequences. So these work slightly different from linear sequences because in the previous video, we, we, can, we could see, couldn't we, that basically all the linear sequences were arithmetic. In, which, in other words, the gap between the numbers was the same, which made it a bit easier for us. But this time, the gap's going to be different, so uh, I'll talk more about what we do about that and uh, what the different uh, procedure would be in that case. But let's have a look at this first question just to get things started. So it says the nth term of a number sequence is n squared plus 1. So in this question, it's asking us to find the, uh, it's asking us to find the first three terms of a sequence. So what we can do, we can see, well, for the first term, n equals 1. So all we do, we just replace n equals 1 in this uh, general sequence here. So we'll have 1 squared plus 1 which is 1 plus 1, which will be 2 for the first term. Uh, moving on, we've got n equals 2, so that's going to be 2 squared plus 1. Well, 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 1 is going to be 5 for our second term. And then finally, our third term, when n equals 3, will be when we have 3 squared plus 1. And we can see 3 squared is equal to 9. 9 plus 1 will be equal to 10. So. So 2, 5, and 10, respectively, will be our first, our second, and our third terms of the sequence. Now, here's an example of the sort of question that we may be uh, faced with, with a quadratic sequence. So what we need to do in this problem is to do the same as we did before. Let's write the sequence out again. So we've got 1, 3, 7, 13, and 21. Now, if we take the gap now between these uh, successive numbers, we can see we've got between 1 and 3, we've got plus 2, we've got plus 4, plus 6, and plus 8. Now, we've got a problem, haven't we, guys? Because before, for linear sequences, these gaps were the same between each of the different numbers. So what we have to do now, we have to take this one step further. We take the gap, we take the gap between the gaps. So we can see between 2 and 4, we've, we get plus 2. Between 4 and 6, we still get plus 2. And we get plus 2 again. So you might be wondering, well, that's great. OK, it's the same. What do we do next? Well, what we need to do, just as before, we need to highlight the plus 2. So we need to highlight the thing that's the same, but on the second sort of row down. Now, what we do now, we take... Now what we need to do now, we need to write n squared here, but what we do, we take half, this is important guys, we take half of the gap that I've highlighted in blue. So we can see a half of the gap is half times 2, which is just 1, so we can, what we've effectively got is 1 squared, 1 n squared, which is just the same as n squared. And now what we can do, uh, now what we can do guys, is substitute n our value for n is n squared. So when n equals 1, n squared will be equal to 1. When n equals 2, n squared will be 4. So we've taken all the square numbers, 3 squared, 9, 4 squared, uh, 4 squared, which is 16, and 5 squared, which is 25. Now what we have to do, we have to take now, this is the next step, we have to take the difference between our 1 up here and then our original sequence. So we can see that the difference here is actually going to be, the difference here is actually going to be 0. Okay, and then we do the same over here. We take the difference between the 4 and the 3 and we can see that's going to be minus 1. The difference between 9 and 7, which is minus 2. The difference between 16 and 13, which is minus 3. 25 and 21, which is minus 4. And now what we have to do, again, we can see the differences. The differences are actually um, are actually uh, slightly different again. So what we need to do, we need to take the difference between the difference. So we've got minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and minus 1. And now what we can do... We can highlight the minus 1, 
and we can now say, well, what would what would n squared minus n be? So if this was a, if, he, if if these all said minus two, then it would be n squared minus two n. So now we we go back to so we got a minus here because we got minus one, and it's only minus n because it's because although it's a negative value, it's only one. So let's take it a step further again. Let's work out now when n equals one what n squared minus n actually is. So we can see n squared minus n. Uh, that's going to be equal to 1 squared minus 1, which is 0. 2 squared minus 2 is 4. 3 squared minus 3, which is going to be... That's going to be equal to 6. And I almost forgot as well, this value here should actually be a uh, 2. And then we get 12 over here, and then we get 20 over here like this. Now what we can see, if we compare again between n squared and n, we can see we've got a difference now of plus 1. So it's actually 1 behind what our original sequence was. So again, we've got plus 1, and we can carry on like this. So what we can do now, we can say, well, what's n squared minus n plus 1? And we can actually see now that we've got 1, 3, 7, 13, 21. I'm just adding 1 now to each thing. So we can see finally at long last we've actually got a match between our n squared minus n plus 1th term and our actual, our actual sequence. So our general term then for our quadratic, our nth term, will be n squared minus n plus 1. So there's quite a few things to cover there, and it, it, it can be quite complex. And, and my advice for this is to just follow the procedure that I followed there. There's a lot to do, but it do, but there is, a, there is a methodical procedure to it. We take the difference between the difference first. We halve that to give us the coefficients of n, n squared. Then we compare the n squared terms with the sequence. We take the difference... Uh, then we take the difference uh, between the difference and we can see that's where we got the minus 1 from so that, then we get minus n we write that sequence out so we compare again so it's just a case of adjusting and comparing adjusting and comparing so now let's look at this final question now it says the nth term of the sequence is a n squared plus b n now it says right, in part 8 it says right down an expression in terms of a and b for the third term. Well, we know, don't we, for the third term, the n must be equal to 3. So all we've got to do is to substitute n equals 3 into here and into here. So what we actually get for the third term, uh, we'll have a, because we don't know what a and b is yet, we've got a times... 3 squared plus b times 3. So our third term is going to be a times 3 squared, which is a times 9, which is just 9a, plus b times 3, which is 3b. So our expression in terms of a for the third term will be 9a plus 3b. Let's move on now to part b. So in part B, it says the third term of a sequence is 21. So it's actually telling us now what the third term of a sequence is. So we, what we can do, we can straight away take our previous answer in part A and just say that 21 equals 9A plus 3B. We can label this equation 1. But now it gives us another bit of information. It says that the sixth term is 96. But the problem is we don't know what the sixth term is in terms of a and b. So it's worth us going back to here and saying, well, how about we write an expression in terms of a and b for the sixth term? So in that case, we can go over here. We can say that the sixth term will be, instead of a times 3 squared, we'll have a times 6 squared plus b times 6. 
So our sixth term will be 6 squared, which is 36, times A, which is 36A, plus 6B, which is plus 6B, funnily enough. Now it tells us now that it tells us that our sixth term is 96. So we can simply just say that we can just say then that 96 equals 36a plus 6b. Now what we can now we've we've got ourselves now another equation in terms of a and b. So we can go over here now and we can say, well, we can bring this equation here, we can write this out again just below the first equation, and we can say that 96 equals 36a plus 6b. And we can call this equation 2. Now it's actually now what it actually does now it actually says find the value of a and b you must show where you're working so we need to solve these pair of simultaneous equations and this is all about uh, eliminating one of the variables so I can see all the, all the values in equation 2 are actually even so what if we were to divide both sides of the second equation by 2 we would be left with 48 equals 18a plus 3b. Now if we write the first equation out again, and again there's no change to the first equation, all we have to do now guys is to subtract one from the other. And when we do that we can see that 3b, the 3b's cancel out. So now we've got 21 take away 48, which happens to be minus 27 equals 9a minus 18a, which is minus 9a. And then if we divide both sides by minus 9, we end up with a equals 3. Now, now that we know that a is actually equal to 3, we can actually substitute this in to one of these equations. It doesn't really matter which one, but I'm going to choose equation uh, 1. So that means that 21 equals 9 times 3 plus 3b, so 21 equals 27 plus 3b. Rearranging, we've got 3b uh, is equal to minus 6, so b will be equal to minus 2. So our values altogether is going to be a is 3 and b equals minus 2, and they'll be our final solutions. In the next uh, video, we're going to look at the Fibonacci sequence.